Arachnids. This large group of invertebrates contains a variety of eight-legged creepy crawlies, from spiders and tarantulas to scorpions and amblypigids. While most people are familiar with spiders and scorpions, there are quite a few arachnid groups you may have never even heard of. My name is Jack, and I've spent my entire life traveling all over the globe to find some of the strangest and most dangerous animals in existence. So many of these creatures are feared, misunderstood, and even hated, but I'm on a mission to get up close and personal to show you all the true nature of these creatures. My mission today takes me to the beautiful state of Arizona, and I'm setting out to find arguably one of the strangest invertebrates on Earth and give you all an up-close and personal encounter with this bizarre arachnid. Will we find out the truth about these animals? Are they dangerous? Let's find out. Hello, friends. As you see, I'm joined by a friend today. Introduce yourself, friend. Hey, I'm Tyler. I run the Arthropod Antics YouTube channel. And today we're out here looking for... Vinegaroons. Yeah, down here we have the Tohono Vinegaroon, very close relative to the giant Vinegaroon found in Texas and New Mexico. And these are giant. They get really big and one of my favorite arachnids found down here in Southern Arizona. Yeah, so uh, they're cool, sick arachnids, super dope. So we're gonna uh, start flipping some rocks. That's our best chance of finding one of these bad boys. And uh, we're gonna get on it. Hopefully we can uh, show you beautiful people at home one of the biggest, gnarliest arachnids you can encounter out here in the wilderness of Arizona. Yes, sir. Let's get going. Now these vinegaroons are nocturnal hunters, which means I have my work cut out for me today. The only way I'll be able to find one during the day is by flipping rock after rock in hopes of locating a vinegaroon awaiting nightfall. This is great habitat though, and I am set on finding one of these bizarre arachnids. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, come in and take a look at this, folks. Come here. Come here. This right here is a really spectacular reptile. Tiny baby little alligator lizard. Oh, wow. Look at that tail. That is quite the spectacular tail. Now, back in my home state of Texas, we have the Texas alligator lizard, which dwarfs these little guys. Uh, but this right here is a young juvenile, so he's not quite full grown. But he's probably out here snacking on all sorts of little invertebrates and things like that, snaking his way through all these leaves, because uh, it's a pretty big world for a little lizard like this to explore. But wow, that's a really, really cool lizard. Not exactly what I'm looking for today, uh, but a fun little stop along the way. While we were hiking, I spotted something I did not expect to see. What is that? Is that a mouse? <gasps> no way! No way, no way, no way! Okay, I don't want him to get away. Not a mouse, folks. Way, way, way better than a mouse. Shh. <laughs> oh, folks. Folks, Arizona is the gift that keeps on giving. This right here, oh, I yawned. This right here, it's not a mouse, my friends. This is a shrew, a type of fantastic mammal actually more closely related to things like moles and hedgehogs. This little guy is a voracious predator. This looks to be a smaller one. This is a smaller species, but it looks to be a juvenile. Maybe he got lost, maybe he got separated. Oftentimes, many species of shrews will kind of follow their mother in a little sort of train as they move through these environments to, uh, to stick together. They have very small eyes, so they're using things like uh, hearing and scent to actually track down a lot of their prey. But these, surprisingly, are venomous as well. These lovely shrews have a venomous saliva that they can use to easily take down things like insects, arachnids, and sometimes even other moderately sized mammals. So these are fantastic. I love running into shrews. I, this is the last thing I was expecting to see out here while we're out here searching for invertebrates. And uh, as you can tell, I am ecstatic. I love a good shrew. Sericidae is on top. 
But look at that fantastic little guy. We'll let him get right back on his way. But I just wanted to show you guys a closer look at this fantastic little mammal. Vinegaroons lack both stingers and fangs and only use their large barbed pedipalps to ensnare and subdue their prey. This of course means, unlike spiders and scorpions, these vinegaroons do not have any venom whatsoever, making them completely harmless to larger animals, much like us. They may seem slow, but their pedipalps can move quickly when they are in close proximity to prey, allowing these calculated killers to hunt with measured frequency. How cool is that? Finally, after hours of traversing rocky terrain, I flipped the arachnid we were after. Oh, I got one. I got one. Go check this out. <laughs> Look at this. Whoa. Wow. Oh. Check this out, folks. Just hanging out right under this rock. Yeah, go ahead, pick it up. Is the exact vinegaroon. Take a look at this guy. This is a decently sized one. They can still get maybe twice this size, folks. Yeah, I would say this is about half of the size that they could possibly get. So, not too bad. Yeah, really, really nice. As you can see, this dude is totally harmless, folks. Totally and completely harmless. The, the In fact, the only really big defensive measure that these creatures will utilize. So you can see this long tube connected to the, we'll say, bottom of the vinegaroon. So you hear that word, right? Vinegaroon. What do you think the root word of that is? Vinegar. That's right. These animals shoot acetic acid, very similar in its composition to vinegar. So when they've got a predator, maybe a coyote or something goes, smells like dinner. This guy can go, squirt a little bit of essentially vinegar in the sucker's eye. And uh, he's going to go, Jeez, forget it. I'm going to go eat something that doesn't shoot vinegar in my eyes. The coyote does not have a refined palate. He doesn't know that vinegar might go well with the, with the soft kind of shrimpy undertones that I'm sure this vinegaroon would taste like. However, we're not going to be testing that today. No, folks, we're going to be enjoying the vinegaroon. But take a look at this guy. You can see these modified front legs as well work like antenna, right? These animals are super primitive. They're arachnids, they're not insects. So they have these modified front legs, right? How many legs does an arachnid have? Four pairs, eight legs total. So I'm counting here, one, two, three. Where's the second set of legs that we're missing? The fourth set, I should say, it's these antenna-like appendages. You might say, well, Jack, what about these giant claws on the front? Are those not legs? And I would say, <laughs> What a stupid question! No, I would never say that. There's no stupid questions, only stupid people, folks. Now, you wouldn't maybe know, but arachnids have what are called pedipalps, many different species. Things like a scorpion, you might recognize those pedipalps quite well. Those take the form of those nice, illustrious pincers, right? Or in a tarantula, in the males, you can see these dramatic hooked pedipalps in the sexually mature adults that they use for breeding. Not a second set of legs, but pedipalps, a completely different type of appendage. And that's what we're looking at here, folks. We're looking at the claw-like pinching pedipalps of this vinegaroon. So, uh, yes, you could look at this and say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. Yes, it is in fact an arachnid. Now, the genus of these lovely animals is Mastigaproctus, and the first part of that name, Mastig, that's a word we see often in biology, and that means whip. And that's a common name for these animals, whip scorpions. Where do you think they get that name? It's because of that fantastic whip-like vinegar shooting tube that they've got on the back of their abdomen. Super, super, super cool. What a freaky little thing. So Jack, great information about these alien looking arachnids. Right. Just all the more reasons why these are my 
favorite arachnids that we have down here in Arizona. But some more interesting things about these guys is that they are nearly blind. They just have these very small compound eyes on the tip of their head there that really are only good for sensing light, whether or not they are in the dark and safe or exposed to light. So to make up for that, they have those two modified front legs that they use similar to an insect's antenna to feel the surroundings around it. On top of that, the whip, where it gets its name from, is also covered in very fine hairs that it used to sense its things that are possibly behind it. So on top of being a defensive appendage, it's also a sensory appendage that it uses to feel its surroundings. So cool. Dual purpose. Way to go. As you can see, these vinegar runes are some of the most docile animals on Earth. And despite being related to some of the deadliest invertebrates, they are completely harmless. They might fit the bill perfectly for the creepiest of crawlies, but it's important we don't always judge a book by its cover. There's nothing to fear with these lovely invertebrates. Well, I think we've had a pretty successful evening. I'd say so. I think we found exactly the creature we were hoping to find, this lovely, lovely, lovely vinegaroon. So thank you so much for uh, making this, this adventure happen. You are so and, very welcome. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and be sure, of course, to check out Tyler over at Arthropod Antics. I'll attach some links uh, not only in the description, but I'll pin a comment if you don't read my video descriptions, which not to call anybody out, but I think some of you might do that. So uh, we will let this beautiful vinegaroon on her way because we're about to transition into some night adventuring this lovely evening. So we're going to let her, her go. We're going to give her a kiss. I'm going to give her a kiss. You don't have to. <laughs> and uh, we're going to let her get right back. Yep, there's that rock. Right back where we found her. Under this lovely, lovely, lovely little rock. There she goes. So, folks, thanks so much for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I certainly did. And... Hopefully you'll enjoy seeing more stuff from me. Not that. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Not that. We're about to get started on some night hiking stuff. We're going to set up the light trap. Hopefully start beetling up in here. So uh, that's all I really got for you. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you didn't, I feel sorry for you. That you got all the way to the end and still find yourself not enjoying my content. Uh, I will refrain from physically threatening you, but just try better next time. But for all of you lovely people who, of course, did watch and enjoy the content, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something about the fantastic, perhaps even a little bit creepy and strange vinegar runes. And uh, I hope that I taught you something about these fantastic little arachnids. But my friends, if I didn't teach you anything, I hope I left you with something. And I hope I left you with this one thing. The world is full of some crazy, zany, wild stuff. Some creepy crawly things like these weird vinegaroons, some slithery scaly things like venomous snakes. All of it has a purpose. All of it has a role to serve in its respective ecosystem. You don't have to like these vinegaroons, you know, they may be a little creepy, a little weirdy, but they're important members of their respective and native environments. So we need to at least foster an appreciation for these animals. You don't have to be like, oh, oh, excuse me, Mrs. Johnson. I, I didn't get to say my favorite animal yet. It's it's the giant vinegaroon. I'm not expecting that. That'd be great if, if you grow up to be a little kid in a classroom, Miss, Mrs. Johnson's classroom, and your favorite animal's vinegaroon. But if not, please, cut these little guys some slack. They're not scary. They can't harm you. Yes, they're a little bit creepy, but they're super cool and interesting. So I hope I uh, was able to bring you into the world of vinegaroons and uh, maybe get you uh, a little more interested in maybe uh, some type of arachnid you maybe never seen before. But I digress. Thank you all for tuning in today. Once again, I hope I taught you something. I hope I left you with something and I hope that you enjoyed it. So we're going to get going because uh, I got tons of other stuff to find. My whole my whole schedule doesn't revolve around your Friday morning, okay? So I got to get out here. I got to get looking for more stuff because we got tons of stuff to film. So without any further ado, goodbye. Hopefully I'll see you next week. And uh, if I don't, sorry. But uh, for those of you who will tune in, I will see you next time. Take care of yourselves and uh, later.